Shalom Uvracha and a good Yom Tov. Chak Sameach. Why a happy holiday? Simply because today is the liberation, the day that Rabbi Shneur Zalman of the Yadi, the founder of Chabad Hasidism, was liberated from jail. And I want to wish you Leshana Tova Belimuda Hasidu Dubedachia Hasidu Tikata Vetichadem, which should be inscribed and sealed in a year in the study and the ways of Hasidut. You might say this celebration is for who? For Chabad, not for the whole world. Why am I wishing it to everyone? Well, this will explain later after we go into our parasha. In this week's Torah portion, we see a very interesting story. The brothers of Yosef sell their brother as a slave to Egypt. And the Talmud of Jerusalem, in the Talmud of Shkalim, in second chapter, it says over there, Lefi shemachu bechora shel Yosef be'esfim shekel, because they sold the firstborn of Rachel, Rachel, for 20 kesef, therefore, this is why we have the mitzvah of Pidyon Aben, the mitzvah of redeeming our firstborn son. As you all know, when a mother, which is Jewish, gives birth to her firstborn son in a natural way, that firstborn son does not belong to the parents. He belongs to God. And therefore, in order to redeem him after 30 days, we have to pay five slaim, which is a certain quantity of five silver coins, which is the value of Esrim Kesef, which is the same value they sold Yosef for as a slave to Egypt. So it seems a little weird that from such an act of selling their brother, we have such a wonderful mitzvah, which is the mitzvah of redeeming our son and celebrating. Actually, those who participate in such a meal of the mitzvah of Pidyon Aben, it's equal to, to 84 fasts. This is one explanation. We know that really in Parashat Bo, the reason for Pidyon Aben is because God made a difference between the first born Egyptians, which he killed on the night of Passover, and the firstborn Jews, which stayed alive. And because they stayed alive, then they showed that God acted in a miraculous way. Therefore, God said, Kadesh li kol bechol, sanctify the firstborn, because the miracle happened through them. Really, the reason why the miracle happened through them is because Yosef was sold. This is what is told by our commentaries. The Talmud says there's another mitzvah as well, which comes from the mitzvah, from the fact that uh, they sold, the brothers sold Yosef to Egypt. Because they sold him for Esrim Kasef, for 20 Kasef, and they were 10 brothers, therefore each one had a portion of two Kasef, which is half a shekel, Therefore, we have the mitzvah of machatzit a shekel, which is to give half a shekel as an atonement. And this half a shekel would be given, we give it at the moment, moment of Adar, the month of Adar, and Rosh Chodesh Adar, and this money would go to buy the communi- communal offerings, sacrifices in the temple. And this would be an atonement. So it's interesting. We have one mitzvah, which is a negative mitzvah, which is, as a result of something negative, we need an atonement, so it's half a shekel, and comes from the selling of Yosef. Then we have a mitzvah, which is a happy mitzvah, a mitzvah of Pidyon Aben, redeeming the firstborn, which is a result of selling Yosef. So are there two aspects to what happened? Is there anything positive that happened in the fact that they sold Yosef? Well, to understand this, we have to first understand, were there really 10 brothers that sold Yosef? We know that Reuven was not part of the sale of Yosef. So one of the commentaries says, you know what? The brothers said, Reuven, we'll give the money for him and he'll pay us back. Another commentary says that Yosef was part of his own sale. What does that mean? To understand this, we have to go into the Zohar and the commentary of the Zohar of Rabbi Avram Azulai in Or Achama. And the Migdash Melech, which is another Kabbalistic commentary. 
Over there it says that this was a plan from heaven that things should go in that way through the cell of Yosef by his brothers and not in any other way should Yosef go down to Egypt. What happened? Egypt. Egypt is called in the Torah referred to Ervat Haaretz, the nakedness of the land, the most perverted, despicable place, a place of sorcery, a place where no soul is ever able to free itself. It's imprisoned. Like an addict that's in prison in his addiction, a person comes into Egypt and it's so filled with negative, negative energies and negative forces that nobody could be freed. So we had to prevent. We had to prevent the soul of Yosef from going and being lost. How do you do that? There's a concept of Evet. In the Torah, there's a concept of being a servant, being a slave. When you are a slave to someone, you belong to him. And therefore, everything you acquire belongs to the master, doesn't belong to the slave. The brothers of Yosef, they had a slave. They took him, Yosef, as a slave and they sold him as a slave. When he went down to Egypt, as much as the negative forces of Egypt wanted to take power over Yosef, there was always in his deep identity something that relates him to his brothers, that he is the servant of his brothers. And therefore, they could never completely take power over the soul of Yosef. And therefore, Yosef, even when he stood in front of Potiphera, 17-year-old, good-looking young man, with all the excuses in the world to sin, when he saw the face of his father appear to him, he said, Vaima'en Yosef. Yosef refused to be with Potiphera. He refused. But how do you take him? Where do you get that strength to refuse? Because when the brothers came to Yaakov and they said, Yaakov, we're sorry for the loss of your son. Yosef refused. The same expression is used. I'm sorry, Yaakov refused to give up on his son. Vaima'en leit nachem. He refused to be consoled. Because he refused to give up on his son, his son refused to give up on himself. Yosef at Sadiq eventually becomes the master of the whole economy, and all Egypt becomes his servant. But he is the servant of Jews, which are the servants of Hashem. So really, the Egyptians are the servants of the servant. And like this, Yosef could take the whole land of Egypt, the lowest land, and make it that it should be a servant, all should be servants of God. Yosef at Sadiq. Concerning Yosef, it all started by the fact that they saw that the father, Yaakov, favored him. They were jealous of all the Torah that he studied from his father. The same story happened to the Bala Geula, to Rav Shniel Zalman of Liadi, the founder of Chabad Hasidism. When he was a student of the student of the Baal Shem Tov, the founder of Hasidism, which had a student by the name of the Magid of Mezrich, he was the youngest of students, just like Yosef was the youngest. The Magid gave him the essence of his teachings. And the brothers, those who studied in the same classroom, didn't understand what was this new path the Rabbi Shneel Zalman of Liadi had. The new path of not just keeping the teachings of Hasidut for himself, but spreading it. Spreading it and spreading it even more when he came out of jail. The opponents to Hasidut put him in jail. They're the ones that accused him and brought about that he would end up in jail for 52, 53 days for each one of the 53 chapters of Tanya that he revealed to the world. Why did he sit in jail? This was an accusation from above that he should not continue to spread Hasidut. But the Holy Baal Shem Tov and the Magid of Mizrich, after their passing, came to visit him in the prison cell. And he said, what should I do? He said, he said continue. And he continued teaching the secrets of Torah to the most simple people. And with more vigor, with more power, his classmates were against him. 
But at the end, the fact that everybody was against him is what God intended. This was intended so that Hasidut should spread forth with even more power and it should be accessible to everyone. And this is exactly what Chabi Shniel Zaman Livdiadi did. You know that when the Magid was one of the students, there was like a dormitory and, and there the Magid went from bed to bed with his lantern. And when he came to Rab Zalman Yu, which is Rabbi Shneur Zalman of Liadi, he said he will eventually be the rabbi, the Rav of all of Russia. At the beginning, he went down to jail in Russia. At the end, his Shulchan Aruch, his code of Jewish law, which is so precise, it's quoted everywhere. And so exact in every law eventually became the accepted book of law, Shulchan Aruch Arav, of all, all of Russia and Poland. And today, Baruch Hashem, it's accepted everywhere in the world. Why is Rabbi Shneur Zalman called Shneor? Shneor, because it's two lights. The light of the revealed aspect of Torah, the code of Jewish law which he wrote, and the secrets of Torah, which is the Tanya. The Tanya Kadisha, which is basically the mode, the guide that teaches a person how to connect to his soul and how to reveal his soul even when he is in his own personal Egypt, even when he is at the bottom rock, to know that you're always connected to Tanya, which is Tanya, which is the same letters as the word Eitan. Eitan, which means the essence of the soul. And at any moment you can completely turn over. Today, is not only the celebration of Chabad. It's the celebration of the whole world. The whole Jewish world. It says in our Talmud that they sold the Bechor, the firstborn of Rachel. Who was Rachel? Rachel is the one that was not even buried with her husband because she agreed to be buried away in order to be able to pray for the children of Israel when they go to exile. Rachel is the one that gave birth to Yosef, the only one that was able to get out of Bet Yaakov, the house of Jacob, and go even in the lowest of lands and stand strong with his Jewish identity. Yosef is the one that gave birth to two children, Menashe, which means I remember the house of my father, and then Ephraim, which means I was fruitful even in the, poverty, the land of poverty. This is the lesson of Rabbi Shneur Zaman of Liadi. To be able to be in the lowest land, in Thailand, in Iceland, whatever land it is, and to be able, even when there's nothing, to make Judaism, Judaism sprout forth and transform communities, reveal souls, and be fruitful and successful. And this is our celebration. Today, there are over 4,800 shluchim, emissaries, that continue with a self-sacrifice, which is incredible in every corner of the world, to spread Judaism. And this is all thanks to this very special day. So to all of you, I would like to encourage you to study Hasidut, take the time, go to Chabad.org. There are many, many websites, many, many teachers which will be there to teach you the essence of your soul and the essence of Torah, which is in Tanya. Participate in gatherings of rejoicing. And I wish to all of you a good Yom Tov. Chag Sameach.